When most people think about working on ships, they tend to think of ocean-going vessels and completely forget about the Great Lakes and the ships that call the lakes their home. Lakers, as they're called, have their own unique culture and place in history. And they still continue to quietly build on that legacy today. So I'd like to take you back to the Sam Loud and a more in-depth look of what it's like working on a Great Lakes freighter. Working in the Great Lakes isn't like working in the ocean. Things are done a little differently out here. Besides the fact that it feels like you've stepped in a rust belt time machine, there's a reason guys call this the Wild West. And I somehow found myself right in the middle of it. What a fucking rust bucket, Jesus Christ. When I first saw the ship, I remember thinking, what the hell did I get myself into? It was by far the oldest ship I've ever worked on. But there's a good reason for that. Because the Great Lakes are freshwater and so much less corrosive than the ocean, Lakers tend to last a lot longer. An average Laker can last anywhere from 40 to 50 years. This particular ship was built in 1975. The ship was just on a short shuttle run. She was just bringing stone and coal into Cleveland. And the transit was only about a half a day, not even. take about a day to load the stone or coal and before you knew it we were all loaded up heading back to Cleveland usually when a ship comes into port they bring aboard a pilot to navigate the river Especially if something like the Cuyahoga, super narrow, winding river. You would expect there to be a pilot, but not on the Great Lakes. On the Great Lakes, the captains steer the ship into port. And these ports, some of the mills and quarries we were going to were well over a hundred years old. Like I said, Rust Belt time machine. Seeing the old industry was pretty cool. It kind of felt like you were on a movie set or something. Didn't seem real. Before you knew it, the bays were empty and we were getting ready to leave. When we leave port, the Cuyahoga is so narrow, we have to go reverse till the river gets wide enough for us to turn around. Again, showing the skills these captains have. This time, we are going to be heading over to Marblehead to pick up stone. But still, it was a short transit, only a couple hours.
The thing about Marblehead and most docks in the Great Lakes is the loader doesn't move. So when we were going to load in a different bay, we would have to shift the ship using our mooring lines. By me heaving on the forward spring lines and the stern paying out on the aft spring lines, we're able to move the ship back to the desired bay. It's a long process and both winch operators have to work in tandem to shift the ship properly. If someone pulls too hard, if someone doesn't pull hard enough, accidents can happen. That's why the Great Lakes are crazy. quick turnarounds and short transits definitely made for long days but we try to make the most of it the thing about most of the ports in the Great Lakes at least the ones I went to is there are no longshoremen. You have no one to send lines to. So what we end up doing, putting our ladders down and sending one of our guys to take the lines. Another cool thing about Lakers is most of them are self-unloaders. Underneath each cargo bay is a gate. We'll open those gates up, the product will go down to the conveyor belt, and that'll take it to the boom. And from the boom, it'll go to shore. After Cleveland, we got good news. We were no longer going to be doing our short little run. The word was we would be heading up to Detroit, heading to Zug Island. It sure did feel good not having those short transit days and fast turnarounds. Actually, the silver lining of it was because things were so hectic those first couple weeks, kind of trial by fire, I feel like I really learned a lot and was really starting to get the hang of what it was like to work on the Great Lakes. Or that's what I thought until one of the crew members wanted to go to shore. You get stuck rowing the boat. Back to the ship. Somebody wants to go on shore. Be a sailor, they said. See the world. When a rowboat outside Detroit rolled back to this fucking ship built in 1975. From Zog Island, we headed north of the Detroit River, heading towards Lake Huron. So I'm on River Watch. We just passed Detroit. I've been in this little crow's nest for four hours, another two to go. Me just looking out the window. Mm -hmm. 
So the word was we got a bunch of random jobs. Pick up some gyps in here, bring it over there. Grab some iron ore, drop it off over there. The next couple weeks, we're going to be bouncing around Lake Michigan on Lake Huron. We were really going to open her up, let the old girl stretch her legs a little. And as we were coming into Detroit, and the mailboat was approaching, on the mailboat was my relief. And my short time in the Great Lakes was coming to an end. Looking back at my hitch, the days were long and the work was hard, but it was cool to see how things were done up north and to be a part of something that has so much history and culture. Thanks for the ride, Sam Loud. It was a pleasure. Fair winds and following lakes. Big thank you to Paul Murray for the drone footage. Go check out his channel. He has a ton of cool drone videos. Be sure to head over to the Sailor Slap Chest and check out our new Great Lakes t-shirts. If you enjoyed the video and you'd like to support the channel, please consider liking, subscribing, or sharing the video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.